Hello everyone and one down to times 15 back again for another VW for another WWE pay-per-view review and yesterday I finished watching the Clash of the Castle at the Castle Clash at the Castle live and what a Clash at the, at the Castle it was indeed I not only did I watch it my, my dad watched it with me and of course my friend Stephen watched it with me we were facetiming each other on Facebook and we were reacting together and oh my it was fun it was really really fun okay then let's start off with the first match which was the WWE Championship I quit match between WWE Champion Cody Rhodes versus the phenomenal AJ Styles and let me tell you it was a banger of a match there was handcuffs there was chair shots there was uh, body parts being aimed up and even a microphone to the head to Cody Rhodes and he got busted open AJ Styles having a go at Cody Rhodes' mom whom he flew all the way from the United States just to watch him wrestle she's getting more and more involved I love it that's really funny it's really good I love it uh, I thought maybe there was going to be some shenanigans with her and long and behold she was there but it was the handcuffs that were AJ Styles' undoing because he was the one that brought the handcuffs into the ring uh, with, it was inside a black bag it must have planted them underneath the ring himself boy did that come to backfire the a British crowd the UK Scottish crowd was electric and they were chanting thank you boss man <laughs> when uh, he brought out the handcuffs and in the end after taking shit uh, after being tied up on the ropes and taking chair shot after chair shot after chair shot Cody Rhodes hit him with his hit his finisher at the crossroads multiple times a Styles clash and even a calf crash your butt in the end AJ Styles couldn't take no more as just before he was about to get hit with the steel steps AJ Styles is like no I don't want any more I quit I quit and still the WWE Champion Cody Rhodes but you know playing along with the UK crowd the Scotland crowd I uh, Cody Rhodes says shall I do it anyway and so he did bang with the still steps letting the hands go home happy at least with this thing with the Cody Rhodes being the champion still then up next it was the triple threat tag team match and finally a triple threat tag team match being done the way it should be it was one person from each team in the ring at the same time no disqualification so with that being said everything was just a mess botches everywhere but hey it's wrestling you you expect to, people to make a few mistakes everyone was making a few mistakes everyone was sorry about that um take two three two one everyone was making mistakes um but in the end after Shane after Cha after the double team onto Shayna Baszler from Jade Cargill and Bianca Belair uh a one German suplex later from Isla Dorn and a cover onto Shayna Baszler one two three the unholy union the local Scottish heroes have done it and they are the new women's tag team champions then up next was the match of the night it was Chad Gable being the challenger facing Sami Zayn for the Unicornel Championship and it was a hell of a banger now the only two members of Alpha Academy came out to support support Chad Gable uh, it was uh, Maxine Dupree and Otis now they were trying their best to compose themselves and yeah I just needed to get a little bit more light behind me because I could, uh, couldn't see you guys so 
Uh, yes, uh, there was a banger of a match. There were some moments where I thought Chad Gable was going to lose it uh, with Otis, but he kept his cool and he kept on working the ankle of Sami Zayn. But uh, the, it was the end of the match. Well, this is what happened as he blamed Maxine Dupree because she gave her instructions to hit Sami Zayn with the Anacom Note Championship, but she just couldn't have the guts to do it. So she basically effed up and he was like, you know, come on here, come here, I want to talk to you. And he was standing in the corner. And of course, Sami Zayn was lining up. Chad Gable for the Halufa kick. And we all thought we knew what was going to happen. No, he he went to hit the Halufa kick, but put the brakes on because he was about to hit Maxine Dupree. Chad Gable moved out the way and hit the Chaos Fury. One, two, no! Okay, that wasn't enough. And if things spilled onto the outside, Chad Gable had a huge ankle lock onto the outside, and was and Sami Zayn was writhing in pain, pretty much just about got out of the ankle lock, but threw Chad Gable into the back of Maxine Dupree, almost like a chop lock. Otis saw it, and even though he tried, he got hit by Chad Gable because, uh, not hit, not hit by Chad, by Sami Zayn because he pushed him into the way before this, and he got pissed. Nobody hits Maxine Dupree. Nobody hits a woman. It's not right. He thought it was on purpose, and then Otis was like, "No, I'm gonna check on my friend. I'm gonna check on my friend Maxine Dupree. Hope she's okay back. Took her backstage. Of course, her trade Gable was pissed. Was in the corner complaining. Turn around. Gets hit with a halutha kick. Sammy the same pins in one, two, three. Still in a Continental Champion. Sammy Zayn. Then up next was the." Women's Championship matches. Women's the birthday girl Bailey defends her title against Piper Niven, and yes, again another funny uh, banger. It was a really good match. Uh, there was uh, moves that were hit by both women. At one point, I thought Piper Niven had done it way early in the match. Charles Robinson, little Nate, was poked by the. Uh, Chelsea Green got said Chelsea Green you're out of here and pretty much at the end it she came back with her wearing a Rey Mysterio mask but it could not help her without Piper Nithin because I believe it was one um, it was one silly roll up later Bailey successfully defends her title against Piper Niven. But here we go. I'm about to talk about it. The hell of a match between Damian Priest and the homecoming hero Drew McIntyre. The, the crowd went when I mean, they had a speed mo the speed on the time, a sound armature picking up how much noise they were making. Throughout Drew McIntyre's entrance, a hundred and five plus. That's how loud they were. That is insane. Decimals, I'm guessing. But oh my god, it was loud. Had the Scott it live of uh, the brave of uh, Scotland, uh, the Scotland of his brave theme being played by some bagpipes or panned uh, bagpipe uh, guys playing guys and girls playing bagpipes there uh, and some drums. McIntyre makes his entrance. Damien Priest pretty much gets booed out the building. They start off the match back and forth, and Damien Priest gets some more uh, momentum in. He closed, I think it's closed lines, do, or uh, Drew McIntyre on the outside. Then he goes for his shirt. He always hits this move the top rope, see, you where he jumps onto the top rope onto his opponents. But not this time! 
Uh, he got his leg caught on the top and middle rope. It was twisted in his own, at his ankle, and my god, that, that was like for a good five minutes. That must have been hurting. Those ropes are not made of rubber, I can tell you that. They're like, pretty much like a, a sailor's rope. But, yes, yeah, so they are real, real hard ropes. They were hurting his ankle, that's for sure. We can tell he was in writhing pain, but he did go on. But I feel like they had to rush a couple of spots in the match because after maybe two minutes of what of trying to continue, you could see him hobbling and he was limping. And so he put the straps down meaning that he was signifying till the end of the match. They rushed through all of the spots that they were going to do, including the high cross, razor's edge. My god, bravo for Damien for going through this. Now, he came down to uh, the referee dodging an attack, thankfully, landing hard on the outside, while the other two were uh, still wrestling in the ring. He was about to get back in the ring and the referee gets knocked off the apron. Oh boy, I thought maybe the Judgment Day were going to come out. Maybe somebody was going to help Damien Priest to come out. But the Judgment Day were barred from ringside. One Claymore later, everyone's counting. One, two, three, four. It must have been up to 900 because Damien Priest was out for the count. In comes another referee. We can see it from afar. If we get up close, he slides in. He's got long, slick black hair. A little bit of an elbow pad for, for whatever reason. We hear it. One, two, and he stops. Then the camera pans round, and it's no other, no other than that filthy, no good son of a bitch. See ya, punk. Really, punk? This is the time to get back at Drew McIntyre? You're already cost him the World Heavyweight Championship once. Why cost him this opportunity now? He gets in his face. And of course doesn't do anything because he doesn't want him to get disqualified. But of course Drew McIntyre loses it. He puts his hands on CM Punk. And CM Punk does the... It's, gives us the Scotland screw job because he then low blows Drew McIntyre who then gets hit with a south of heavens and the referee slides back in the ring one two three still the world heavyweight champion Damien Priest now I don't mind Damien Priest winning if he would have won fair and square, that would have been fine. It would have been booed out of the building and there might have been a riot, but for God's sake, how the hell are they going to make us cheer for CM Punk? There's no way you could cheer for CM Punk after that act. Costing somebody a championship and a baby face a championship, nothing less. You ain't going to be able to turn this on its head. You could have Wade Barrett, who was going off on commentary one, and see a punk fired, and and how disgusted he was. You could have him come out of retirement and talk trash about the town, but it ain't gonna help. It ain't gonna work. So what CM Punk did was cost one of our favorites a chance to become World Heavyweight Champion. So that my that. I don't know, it was an, accident, an accidental double turn. You ain't gonna be able to come back from that. You can try and spin it all you want. But when you cast somebody a championship in wrestling, that's a dick move. That's a heel move. Especially if it's by a low blow. Now, if it's just a, it's like a cheeky distraction, if they would have just distracted him and not done anything and drew him back a and then just go and look behind you and then Damien Priest hit the choke the south of heavens and then CM Punk getting out the ring and chucking the referee in the ring and the referee goes one two three that would have been a story to where Drew McIntyre should have would be the one to blame by getting distracted it wouldn't have been too much of a dick move, no pun intended, 
putting down, low blowing somebody and cussing somebody in the match, that's a heel move. So I don't care how WWE tries to spin it in front of the American fans. I'm pretty sure any American fans that were watching or whoever's watching around the world on that night yesterday will have to agree that that move was a heel turn from CM Punk. And you know what? As much as I don't like Phil Brooks and I love CM Punk, that is a heel CM Punk that I like. And because I'm hating the fact that he did that, that means they're doing their job. And that's why I love wrestling. I want to stay tuned to Raw. I want to see CM Punk get his ass kicked by Drew McIntyre. I will have to wait and see him on tomorrow's Monday Night Raw to see what happens. And until that next time, where we are going to be in Money in the Bank in live from Toronto, they are a pretty loud bunch themselves. So we shall see what happens at Money in the Bank. Will Drew McIntyre enter the Money in the Bank and win the Money in the Bank? Or will he be too busy feuding with Punk? Will Phil Balor, Jey Uso, who will win the Money in the Bank? We will find out because I will make my predictions for those. Last year I was there in live in person in London in the O2 when I witnessed Damien Priest win the Money in the Bank. And I also witnessed Eo Sky win the Money in the Bank. But who's going to win it this year? We will find out soon. I'm going to give uh, this a three and a half stars and one thumbs up because of the ending. That's pretty much it. Well, it's enough four stars because the other matches were pretty. Some of the other matches could have been better too. That's why it's three and a half stars for me. But until the WWE Money in the Bank predictions, goodbye. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, then feel free to subscribe. If you want to watch the previous video, then click on the video on the left. But if you want to watch the playlist, then click on the playlist that's on the right.